Powerboat Nation TV. Today let's take a look at installing a Mayfair add-on hydraulic steering system onto this Bravo Drive and a 28 Party Cat. Pretty simple thing to do, so let's look at the parts and then we'll get started. When you're installing a hydraulic steering system, what you've got to be able to do is find out your center points and then how far off the transom housing we need to put the rams. See we put tape on here and I've already done some center marks that came off the center of the hinge pin and then out are 17 and 3 quarters which is where the edge of this bracket's going to sit once it's actually attached to the wing plate on the drive. To find our center point basically I just took and put a mark on the center of the trim center unit then I'm going to take a level off of that and level up to that point and then put a mark off this that'll correlate into the center part. Now to find our line to the outside, when I checked the boat with my smart level, we were about 1.2 degrees tilted this direction. So we'll take and put our level up, put our smart level in place, and then we'll go to 1.2, and then that's where we mark the line, and that's the center line of our rams off of our drive. Do the same thing on both sides if you're two rams, single ram, just on the one side. Like I mentioned before, this is a 17 and 3 quarter off of the transom housing kit using the 9 inch ram. So if we mark off the side of the transom housing, we put our mark at 17 and 3 quarter, and this is going to be the outside edge of the bracket. So once we get the wing plate installed, we'll be able to set the pin in and then run our bracket and then we can check both sides to make sure that everything's straight because you only want to do this once. Now that we've got our marks on the back of the transom for where our rams are going to go, we're going to need to take the outdrive off so that we can change these studs to longer studs, which will allow us to put the Mayfair modular wing plate on that will hold up the back half of the rams. Now let's go up inside the boat and take a look at what we got to change inside on the shuttle valve. Okay, inside what we've got to do is we've got what's called the Brazilian manifold. This is a later model boat, so it has a Brazilian steering shuttle valve inside. And we've got to pull off the end of that shuttle valve, which is attached right in here, to install our new piece to be able to get the fluid from the shuttle valve out to our new ramps. What we need to install inside of the boat so that we can get the fluid from the shuttle valve to the rams is what's called this Brazilian manifold. Being that this is a later model boat, it has this Brazilian shuttle valve that the steering cable connects into and as the steering cable moves back and forth, it's moving the fluid back and forth to create the power steering. We're basically going to take the fluid from that valve out of here and move it to the rams on the outside that then is going to do our steering for us. Now that we've got the drive pulled off the back of the boat, we need to take out these top four studs right here so that we can replace them, like we mentioned before, with these longer studs for the wing plate. There's plenty of ways to do this. The easiest one being that we're not using the studs again, don't really care what happens to them, is with a good pair of vice grips. Just clamp onto the stud, give it a pull, and remove it, all four studs. We'll go ahead and run a tap in the holes to clean them up and then we'll install our new studs. Okay, put the studs in, we're gonna put a little bit of red Loctite on the stud. Thread the stud in. Until it stops. Now we're ready to pop the drive back on. We've got our out drive mounted back to the bell housing. We've got our longer studs installed. Now we're going to put on the wing plate. This is a modular three-piece wing plate. We just assemble it somewhat loose until everything's on and bolted up. Then we can tighten the end cap pieces. It's going to use these top two bolts here. So we'll remove that. They run a spacer. Bolts will go through here. And then on the longer studs, we're just going to run the washers and nuts. Now that we've got our wing plate installed, everything's tight to the studs. It's tight to the back of the cap we're going to install one of the rams. Ram's going to slip into the back of the wing plate. Just drop the stud through for now because we're not going to put the nut on it. I've taken and made a mark at half the travel of this ram. Being this is a nine inch ram, got a mark at four and a half inches, which is half its travel. Then we're going to see how it aligns to the back of the boat. And we come up really close to our mark. So we're going to check both sides making sure the drive is straight 
to see how we line up to both sides to this mark. Okay, let's do the same thing on this side. And as you can see, we're pretty close on both sides. We're about a quarter of an inch from our mark, which it's not always going to be exactly what it says at 17 and three quarter, because we do have some stacked tolerances we're de dealing with here, as far as how far the wing plate may be off. Really, it's a matter of both sides being identical, so we get full extension and contraction of the ramps. Something you can do to make sure your drive is square to the back of the boat, being that really nothing is too square that you can measure off of. I'm gonna use my center lines that I've marked off of the side of the transom. I'm gonna measure back to two points on each side to see if we're square. So just hold it on the mark, go back, and we're right about 36 inches on that side. Do the same thing here and we're right at 36 inches. So we know that the drive is square for when we go to mount the ramps. Now that we know that everything's square, our ramps are where we need to be, we're gonna take and mark onto the back of the boat where we need to drill the holes through to be able to mount the ram. So just set it up in place. You've got your center mark, center it between the bracket. Make sure the bracket is square in here. And then we'll take and we'll actually mark our holes And that's what we're going to drill to. Okay, we're going to now take apart the back half of the Brazilian manifold. This portion needs to get pulled off so we can install the new Brazilian manifold. I already have the bolts loose. Now we'll take and we'll just pull this piece back off of the piston. You will want to put something under it because it is going to drop a bunch of oil out. As you can see, there's an O-ring around here, and normally there's an O-ring here that has fallen off or it's still attached up inside of the housing. We're gonna wanna, here it is here. It's a little O-ring that sits right there. Those are really important when you put the new Brazilian manifold back in place to put those O-rings back on. The next thing that you've gotta remove is you've gotta remove this piston from the shaft. On this side of the shaft, there's actually two slots that allow you to put a 7 16 wrench over it. If you have a, a piston removal tool, there are two holes in the side here. If you don't, you can use a pair of channel locks because we're not going to be using this piston again. Lock in place and then break it free. And then just thread off the piston. Before you put on the new Brazilian manifold, make sure that you clean this edge and chamfer it off good and clean so that you don't cut the new O-rings. Now that we've got our end piece off of our Brazilian manifold, we're gonna install the O-ring that goes over and then it'll go up inside. The housing. Push it back in there. We've also got the little oil passage o-ring on the bottom installed already. Greased up the o-rings inside here. So we'll slide this over the end of the shaft. You want to make sure that the deburrs are clean. Slipped on nicely. Slide it all the way back. And then thread the bolts in. And you're going to torque them to 20, 25 pounds, something like that. And that should be adequate to seal it. Okay, we've got our cylinders kind of just mocked up here with the holes that we drilled. Now we want to see about how we're going to run the through hole lines through the back of the boat so we can get to our shuttle valve. Normally take and just kind of loosely put on the 90 degree fittings with the hose and take a look at how they're going to route best to be able to go through the boat. On this one, right in here, is going to be the best spot. So our first hose will be here and our second will be right up here. It'll give a nice clean look with a hose. Now we're going to take and drill through here with our three quarter holes, put our through holes in and move to the next step. If you challenge like me drilling holes straight through something, here's a little tip that will help. 
Set the drill up on your point and I use a little square. Set in place, center myself up, center myself up, double check it, then drill the hole. That will keep you 90 degrees through a transom that's at 12 degrees. Okay, now we've got all our holes drilled on the back. It's time to put the bracket on. We're gonna use a good marine grade silicone that's for above or below the water line. And we're gonna put just a little bead around each hole so that when we tighten the bracket down, it'll help seal the back side so you get no moisture up into the transom. Okay, we've got a bracket pushed in from the outside. Now we're gonna put our backup plate on. And then we'll take and we'll put pre-NICs on our nuts. Put a washer. We'll put the nut on, all four of them. We'll tighten them all down and then we'll be good to install the ramps. When installing these through holes, it's best to put the through hole through with the nut and the washer, then tighten the nut down to it, and then we can come back later and put silicone on it to be able to seal and tighten it once we get these clocked correctly so our hoses will route as we want them to go. As you can see, we've got everything installed on the outside of the boat. All that's left now is to run our hoses on the inside. We got two hoses that'll run from our Brazilian manifold into our fittings here that have T's into them. And then we got the longer hoses that'll cross over to the other side. One thing that's important to remember when you hook it up is that one side that's pushing has to connect to the other side that's pulling. Thankfully, Mayfair has a nice set of instructions for you to follow to get this done correctly. Okay, we've got everything done with our installation. All that's left now is to run it, check for leaks, and bleed the system. Bleeding's pretty simple with these. It's a matter of just steering the helm back and forth three, four, or five times. It's self-purging. Just make sure that you uh, check the fluid reservoir. You've got enough oil in there because you don't want to suck more air into the system. Another thing is go through and make sure that all the bolts are tight, all the hoses are tight. Just do one double check on everything. When you're assembling everything, try to use anti-seize or oil or something on the stainless bolts. It just keeps everything from galling and it keeps you from getting pissed off while you're doing the job. We got all our steering installed. We got the boat outside in the sunshine. It's gonna be time to start it up, make sure we don't have any leaks. We're gonna bleed the system, which like we said before, is a matter of just rotating the wheel back and forth four or five times. Let's turn the water on, get this thing bled. Our startup went well, we didn't have any leaks, everything installed nicely. This is a great system from Mayfair. Now the guy's heading to the lake, go run it around. Thanks for watching Powerboat Nation TV.